All right, guys, uh, welcome to Gradient Pixels. It's Nick and I, once again. Um, this video is gonna be about our top five E3 most wanted. Um, so I figured we would just go, you know, five to one. Um, I don't know how you wrote out your list. I tried yeah. to write it, um, you know, least to most wanted, I guess. Okay, um, I did like so. my, I, I didn't really put an order in, I just kind of put stuff that I wanted to see, but. And that's, that's fine, fine. We'll, just, we'll just go like, okay, number five is this, this. Yeah. And then we'll do that and go forward onward. Wanna read off your Yeah, first sure. One? So my I guess my number five uh would be a new Dead Space game from mm -hmm. EA. Uh it seems that Dead Space has kind of taken a back seat for a while. Uh I don't know if they just said that they weren't gonna make any more or if it's just like a studio thing that they wanted to do uh, new stuff. I don't I mean I don't think they really commented on the future of the franchise, but considering they you know, close the studio. Oh, that's right. They closed it. It's okay. probably there's probably not a good chance. I'm yeah, coming back. I don't. I don't think there'll be a good chance. But I just I'm interested because uh, I'm a, a decent fan of the original Dead Space trilogy. I I haven't played the one on the Wii, but I kind of want to just out of curiosity. It's mm -hmm. like an Unreal shooter compared to the other ones. But I think they had a really they did a really good job at like building a world in that game, like mm -hmm. a horror -y world like the first one was pretty scary the second one was pretty scary the third one wasn't that scary but i really liked what they did because there's like some moments in the third one where you can like float around in space and stuff and mm -hmm. i always thought that was really cool so seeing that on like the next gen i think would be a really cool thing it'd, it'd be a cool surprise yeah yeah i still haven't played dead space but i probably should because i love resident evil 4 so they kind of go hand in hand um but yeah, that'd be awesome to see, especially because it's a lot better than seeing the, the next FIFA or the next Madden yeah. from, from EA. Which we know they're going to show. Yeah, anyway, it would, so. it would nice, it'd be nice to be surprised, but um, I'm not going to hold my breath for that. Or yeah. Skate 4. It's not on my list, but I would like to sk see a Skate 4. Um, anyway, so my fifth one is I want to see Microsoft announce the Master Chief Collection for PC. Um, I really don't have any incentive to buy an Xbox, but I'd love to play Halo again, especially the classic ones. Um, Nick and I, you know, back when Halo 3 was first released, we played Halo all the time. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of nostalgic feelings towards that game in particular, um, and the old ones as well, but especially 3. Um, and also, I played Halo Online recently, um, which some of you might know as El Duito, or whatever it's <laughs> called, El Dorado, um, which Microsoft canceled recently, but that was like a... Uh, I think there was like a Russian version of Halo 3 Online that Microsoft put out and it was cancelled after a few months, but fans managed to salvage it and make it into something that was like a real Halo 3 Online experience on the PC. Um, so my PC at home sucks, but I think the idea of playing Halo on PC is a lot of fun, so I'd love to see that announced so whenever I get a gaming PC I can play Halo again. Um, yeah, I, the gang. I, I think that's probably pretty likely. Um, it seems like at least the trend for like the last year or two is that they've been taking a lot of their Xbox stuff and doing the, what is it, the like buy it once or whatever they yeah, call it. Yeah, it's that like program. you buy it once. It's, you get it on, on PC, everything. on Xbox, everything. So I don't think that's out of the realm. Of yeah, well, I think they've they've mentioned it before. They've never like come out and like directly said like yeah it's coming. Just wait until E three. But they have hinted at it heavily, um, yeah. especially whenever they canceled Halo Online. Um, they said, you know, we want to work with the developers and everything in the future, so okay. I'm sure it's coming. And Microsoft needs to do something. I mean, they're kind of like the odd one out in terms of the big three. Everyone's just kind of looking at them for what they're going to bring for E3. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not as important for Nintendo and Sony because everyone knows they have exclusives and stuff. Mm -hmm. Microsoft's kind of the weird kid in the corner. They can't. <laughs> so, yeah, they just don't have anything. Like <laughs> so, and and whatever they do have. You know, has been released to a lukewarm reception recently, so it would be nice if they had a hit. Or it's been um, delayed, like Crackdown, yeah. or it's been canceled, like Scalebound. Like, yeah. they, they've had stuff, they've shown stuff, and then it just disappears, and no one get like, they just keep digging their, themselves into this hole. Like, yeah. They don't have anything. So, and I mean, like, I like Phil Spencer, I think he's done a lot for the brand. Um, and I, I like a lot of the things that Microsoft has done recently, like the adaptive controller. I think that's something that should be applauded, but at the end of the day, if you don't have quality content coming through your console, it doesn't mean a whole lot at mm -hmm. the end of the day. So um, I would like to see them have a really strong show in, in general, but in particular, I'd like to see Halo um, come back, because I, I don't have a whole lot of interest in the new ones. I mean, I played 4, and uh, I liked it well enough, but it, it was never quite the same as uh, mm -hmm. 3 and the old ones, so... yeah. 
I think maybe something was lost in the transition from Bungie over to 343. Um, so yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, so my number four, I guess it would be, is uh, a new Bioshock game. Uh, we've heard that 2K considers Bioshock a permanent franchise and mm -hmm. everything. They haven't done anything with the property since Infinite, which was 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually uh, Irrational kind of didn't dissolve, but they turned into Ghost Story, which is a much smaller team than they had at Irrational. Um, but we, we've heard some rumors recently that Hangar 13, who worked on Mafia 3, they might have like some secret studio or something was what was going around that was working on a new Bioshock, which... I mean, I don't know why it's phrased like that, but I I think it's probably realistic. I mm -hmm. think I, I doubt we'll see it at D three or any mention of it, but I that's something that I thought would be cool to touch on. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're gonna do something with the brand because it's obviously really valuable for them. Um, I know when Bioshock Infinite came out, people were kind of mixed on it. I, I particularly I liked it. Um, I did too, but I haven't played it since it came out, so maybe my opinion would be different. But um, I remember at the very least, like maybe the story wasn't as good as Bioshock 1, but I still thought the art direction was really good. And yeah. A lot of things about that game stick out in my mind, so I don't know. I liked it. I think it's one of those um, kind of annoying things where everyone is overly hyperbolic uh, about everything, where it's either the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. Everybody thinks like binary. Thing. Yeah. Um, kind of like, like, like Dark Souls 3. Like, Poise doesn't work the same as it did in Dark Souls 1, so it's a shit game. You know, all that work that From Software did over the course of three years is squandered because yeah. Poise doesn't work the same, which is a very small part of the game. But, um, yeah. It's, it, is, it is what it is. I mean, that's not really going to change. People online are going to spaz about everything. Mm -hmm. um, wish it were different, but anyway, yeah, I'd like to see a new Bioshock 2. Um, I don't know if they would set it in the sky again or what they yeah, would do. That's the real question. If they would if they would go back to a location we've already been to, I think that's probably a safer option. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, seeing as I'm almost positive Ken and his team wouldn't be working on it, mm -hmm. I would kinda want them to do something different to set it apart from those. If they were to set it in Rapture it'd be like, okay, well you're you're gonna try to build what they already in a lot of people's minds think that they perfected yeah so i well, I, I, I would want them to go to a new place yeah i agree i don't i don't think going to rapture again would be a good idea because i think they did it so well in the first one and um i haven't played the second one since it came out but i remember liking it but i think most people would agree it wasn't as good as the first one so i think yeah i think rapture has been done well and i think you know with system shock i think they did space well um so i don't know maybe probably not I don't think they're going to do another Sky one. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what they do, but I, from talking with people over time, I thought it would be interesting if this would be a little bit further from like Canon or whatever. But uh, if they did like an underground city, like mining and stuff, like I think that would be cool. Like sort of like the Sky Rails, if they had just like minecart tracks and mm -hmm. stuff, I think an underground city could be cool. We. One time, a friend and I were talking about uh, like a jungle setting, like if they had like tree houses, like yeah, that kind of tree house city, that could be cool too. Um, but yeah, uh, what's what's your number four for you? Um, so my number four is something that's already confirmed to be happening, but I want to say it anyway because I just got into their games recently, and it's uh, Remedy's new game, which is called P7. We don't know much about it, except it's a third-person action game, which is what every one of their games have been, um, except for the first one, which is Death Rally. It was like a racing game. Um, if you guys don't know who Remedy are, um, they're the company that made Max Payne 1, Max Payne 2, Alan Wake, and most recently Quantum Break. So I got into Max Payne, um, I guess like a month ago, um, and I'm glad I did because I fucking love it, especially the first one. Um, and, you know, I was going to buy it on PS4 because I saw it was on sale, but I decided to buy it on PC, which was a really, really good idea because those games are a lot better um, on the, you know, platform they were meant for. Because he played it on Xbox, and I think he didn't have a whole lot of fun with it. No, um, I, I, had a, I had a couple issues with it, but I haven't played them since probably 2013, something like that, so it's been a while since I've dipped into yeah. Max Payne. Especially because you can't remember like any quotes from the first Max no. game. And that, that game is just, that's one of the most quotable games I've ever played in my life. Jack Lupino's suite was on the top floor. At least it used to be, before the explosive makeover. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember much about it. Yeah, so um, 
yeah, so I played Max Payne 1 and 2, and I loved those. Uh, I played Max Payne 3, and then I played Alan Wake. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll talk about Max Payne 3 another day. <laughs> but yeah, I played Alan Wake, and I didn't think it was as good as the Max games, but I thought what they were doing um, was interesting. They had an interesting idea, but it, it didn't quite reach greatness. It was very close, but didn't quite hit it for me. Um, but I'd still like to see a sequel to that too, which they confirmed this isn't doesn't have anything to do with Max or uh, Alan Wake. Yeah, so anyway, um, I haven't played Quantum Break because I don't have an Xbox One or a good PC, but um, I, I just think, I don't know, I guess their sense of humor, um, the way they write things is always really interesting and captivating to me, so um, I'm excited to see whatever else they're going to do in the future, especially because the next title is going to be multi-platform, so we don't have to worry about Microsoft shoving their shit into it or being <laughs> exclusive because I haven't played Quantum Break, like I said, so I haven't really experienced the TV show aspect, but I've heard kind of mixed things about it, and I've heard, you know, a big part of the reason why there was such an emphasis on that is because of Microsoft, because whenever that game was announced, it was at the reveal, and that's when Microsoft was into TVs and yeah. TV, 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 and sports <laughs> and sports, so that had a big impact on the game, and even uh, Remedy's creative director and uh, the lead writer on Max 1 and 2 and Alan Wake, Sam Lake, he even kind of seems to, in like, like, he seems to imply in interviews that he wasn't completely happy with the game, and part of that was Microsoft shoving that on the remedy. Um, so anyway, I'm just really excited to see what else they're going to come up with. Hopefully it's better than uh, the last two games. So I'm really excited to see what Remedy's going to do, because they always have interesting ideas and concepts in their games, even if it doesn't always materialize into something amazing. Um, it's usually something worth checking out at the very least. So yeah, I'm excited for P7. Remedy's next game. Confirmed for E3. Cool. So, yeah. I'm excited too. <laughs> uh, so my third option is one that we apparently are not going to actually be getting, but uh, it, it's pretty much confirmed, and that's Borderlands 3. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big Borderlands fan. I like all of them, including the Telltale game, which seems like Telltale ignores, mm -hmm. uh, unless it's on sale. Uh, but I really like the story of Borderlands. Uh, the game, the gameplay, I think, is unique. Mixing, or it was unique for the time, mixing a first-person shooter and dungeon crawling elements with like looting and all that. So I think a new Borderlands. They have, they've shown us the tech. They've pretty much mentioned it a bunch of times that it's coming. So I would love to see that, even mm -hmm. though they've said that it's probably not going to be there. Yeah, I doubt it, unless they're going to do like some bait and switch thing. But I don't think they've ever really been known to do that. So yeah. I, I wouldn't expect it. All right. Maybe next E3. Um, so what about your number three? All right, so getting back to what we were talking about before we were, we were cut off. Interrupted. Yeah. Really. Um, the next game I'm super excited about hopefully being there, even though I highly doubt it, would be another Ninja Gaiden game. I would love to see Ninja Gaiden 4, because Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2 are fantastic, especially the first one. Um, I actually like the second one more, which is a very unpopular opinion, <laughs> but the second one at the at the end of the day is very unfinished, it has a lot of problems, so I understand why people uh, don't like it that much. And the third one, as we all know, is impossibly bad. <laughs> Even if you have never played the franchise, you know Ninja Gaiden 3 is insanely bad. Um, you know, when DMC2 came out, everyone thought that game was the worst sequel of all time, and it is awful, but Ninja Gaiden 3 dethroned it for me. Um, I just I still can't believe how bad that game is. Even Razor's Edge, which was supposed to fix a lot of things and make it more like Ninja Gaiden 2, um, completely fucked it up. It's still a terrible game. You would like I, I would rather play Dark Souls 2 than play Ninja Gaiden 3, <laughs> and I hate that game. Um, so I would like to think that Team Ninja could maybe bring it around this time and uh, make a great Ninja Gaiden game, especially because the past or the past few years they've had a good track record with. Dead or Alive 5 and Neo, so I would really like to see them give it a try one more time. And if nothing else, just put Ninja Gaiden Black and Ninja Gaiden 2 on PC and modern consoles, and then leave it alone. I'd be fine with that too. So, yeah, nice. Nin Ninja Gaiden 4. So, my number two is uh, Shadows Die Twice. And it's actually mine as well, so we'll, just, right, we'll, can both we'll just do this. Hash it out right now. Uh, at the Game Awards, it was shown off from software, new maybe IP, maybe retread of an old IP that they had. Yeah. What was it called? A Shadow Tower, I think? Well, I uh, people said it was Shadow Tower just because of the title. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people think it's going to be a game called Kuon, which was mm. a, it's a very obscure PS2 game. It's actually one of the rarest PS2 games ever. I checked eBay like yesterday and the prices are like astronomical for it. Like you're paying like 
four hundred dollars for the game. Um, is it a From Software game? It's it, it's it's yeah, it's From Software, but it's like a old school fixed camera survival horror game, which I would love to play because I love those. But um, I'm kind of shit out of luck right now. <laughs> I want to try and pirate it and play it on my PS2. Um, yeah, but. but yeah. I mean, I like I'm not super familiar with the story. I've just heard from people online that have played it that the story seems very similar to uh the whole title like Shadows Die Twice. Something in the story has to do with that. So mm -hmm. and also in the trailer, you know, there's like, you know, old um Japanese writing in the back of whatever that weapon yeah. thing is. Um so that leads even more credence to the fact that it might be a Kuon game, which is really interesting because I don't think that game is that popular, but Yeah. They, I mean, they definitely earned enough money through, I think, Souls to yeah, be allowed to can basically do whatever they want to do. Yeah. So, and you know, speaking about Souls, I want this game to be nothing like a Souls game because I love Souls, but I want to see what else the team can do. I don't want them to just be a one-trick pony where it's like, yes, they're obviously very good at making Souls. They can make any game a Souls game, and it'll be good. But I want to see what else they can do. You know, obviously, I'd love to see a Bloodborne two someday. Um, but I don't want this to just be another Souls game in like a traditional Japanese setting. Um, so I'd like to see whatever Miyazaki and his team can come up with. Hopefully it's something radically different from what everyone is expecting. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see in a few days. It, it hasn't been confirmed that it's going to be there, but I think I'm assuming... I, I would it. assume it would be there, either at Sony or just as some other random game yeah. they draw. I mean, I, I highly doubt it's going to be a Sony game exclusive, because if it were, they would come out... They would have come out and said that at the Game Awards, so everyone's yeah. like, Hey, look at my new game! <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a Sony game. But I think there's a good chance we're going to see it. Um, they're working on three different things. One of those is Shadows Die Twice. That's the only one they've officially announced. They said they're working on an Armored Core, but that hasn't gotten in the trailer or anything yet. So I'm assuming the first thing they're, they're going to show is Shadows Die Twice. Um, and then some other really weird game. Yeah, the apparently. other one is supposed so. to be a weird game. So whatever that means. Um, so, yeah. Beautiful Katamari with a soul skin. <laughs> That might be cool, I don't know. Um, I'd like that. <laughs> this is not going to be a surprise to Shane, but uh, my number one E3 hope is that we're going to get Starfield from Bethesda. By, t by Tittles, by Tittles, <laughs> Howie. <laughs> uh, I am a big Bethesda Game Studios fan. I More so the, the more modern edge. Uh, I've tried playing Morrowind. I think it's a little too rusty for my taste. I cannot get behind some of the gameplay hooks with that, even though a lot of people say that that's the best game that they've made and it's been downhill. Uh, but I particularly am a big fan of Fallout, their take on Fallout. I love Fallout 3, Fallout 4, even though I, I understand the gripes a lot of people have with Fallout 4. I still think it's good. And I like Skyrim. Everybody likes Skyrim. So uh, mm -hmm. I think if we got... There's been the rumors about Starfield, a new IP from their studio, and I think it's very po possible that we'll get the announcement. They, they've kind of set up that they're going to be talking about Fallout 76, which, hey, I'm pretty excited for. But uh, Doesn't even know what it is. But yeah, don't know what it is yet, but uh, I, I'm so excited because it's Bethesda working on Fallout. But mm -hmm. uh, the just I, I think, personally, that it's kind of a red herring. I think they're, they're setting it up like, oh yeah, we're going to show this, and then... There's been rumors that it's an online sort of game, online co-op. Mm -hmm. So if people maybe <laughs> I keep going. If maybe some people don't have like that's not their cup of tea, I'm thinking they're gonna switch it out and be like, well, if that's not your cup of tea, then we have this, and they'll full blown reveal. This, this, this is what it's not gonna be. This is what it's not gonna be. <laughs> yes, yes, that's very good. It, it, it's not get that in your heads right now. It's not gonna be Elder Scrolls Six. Yeah, um, yeah. I think you know from what I've heard about Starfield, um, it sounds really cool. Um, I haven't played a ton of Bethesda games, but I did really enjoy Fallout Three whenever I played it, um, and I played a little bit of New Vegas, and I actually played Fallout Four over here at Nick's house, which I thought was fun. Um, the main thing with me in RPGs is just that they're so long that um, sometimes I just don't want to dedicate that much time to one game. Um, sometimes I end up playing games for you know hours. Like I played Ninja Gaiden 2 for like 80 hours um, a few months ago. But you know that's not something that you have to do to finish the game. It's mm -hmm. just you know doing it on higher difficulties and everything. Um, but yeah, if Starfield turns out to be like a No Man's Sky, but like with 
with the Bethesda good and the hooks. Bethesda twist. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. So it'd be great to see that because um, obviously we're not seeing Elder Scrolls. Yeah, um, at all. So we're not seeing Elder Scrolls. Quit freaking out. Quit yeah. going in the comments and saying Elder Scrolls Six, Elder Scrolls Six. It's not Elder Scrolls Six. <laughs> yeah, but Todd, Todd will be there. Um, Tiddles will be there. So yes, it's always nice to see him. Hopefully he doesn't lie too much. <laughs> you know, he's kind of known for that, but <laughs> hopefully he won't lie I too like much. I like hearing Todd speak. So. Uh, what, what's your number one? I mean, I, I think I know it, but... Yes, uh, number one for me is insanely obvious. It's Devil May Cry 5. The real DMC5, not that reboot shit. We don't want that. It's been 10 years since DMC4. It has been... Not this. It, it, yes, <laughs> not that. It's been 10 years, a decade. Um, actually... Yeah, yeah, okay, so it's been a decade since DMC4, um, which is really hard to believe. Um, and we've been hearing rumors for the past couple years about a DMC5. Every time E3 comes around, I'm always waited. I'm always waiting with bated breath for them to announce it, and it's never happened yet. <laughs> and every time it never gets announced, people online um, always flip out. Um, I frequent the Devil May Cry Reddit a lot, um, and everyone on there is just jizzing their pants <laughs> for it. Um, everyone is so excited. <laughs> and last year, whenever it didn't get announced, people posted a thread saying, like, let's imagine the game got announced. So people would post in there pretending <laughs> that it got announced and talking about it. <laughs> that's how desperate people are for this game. Um, so, you know, this year, more than any other, there's been leaks out the ass and rumors that it's coming, um, teases from the voice actors. So it must be real this year. It has to be real or else people are going to die. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I can't wait for it. I'm not worried about it at all if it's in development because um, it's Suno, who's the director of 2, 3, and 4. Uh, 2 wasn't his fault. Um, he's the director <laughs> of 3 and 4. Uh, he's amazing. He's never made one bad game his entire life. He knows what he's doing. His combat is second to none. Um, if you ask me, no game has surpassed DMC4 in terms of combat um, until DMC5, which is right around the corner. Um, so I, I'm excited wait. for the announcement. Partially mm -hmm. just, like, I mean, I'm not a diehard Devil May Cry fan, mm -hmm. but just seeing your excitement and hearing the story about people pretending <laughs> that it got announced and celebrating, like, that's going to be one of those announcements that I think is going to be like, okay, that's awesome. Just, yeah. just flat out, that even if they just show a logo. I mean, obviously you, you would hope they show I, I think they're going to show gameplay at this point. I mean, I'm assuming it's been in development for the past, like, three years, mm -hmm. which is also exciting because it's the longest any DMC game has ever been in development. Because what I don't want is another DMC4. That game is... Like, the gameplay is great, but it's half a game. Like, there's no disguising it. It's half of a game. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of awful in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, you know, there's really no getting around it. So I just want DMC5 to be finished. I want them to go to Capcom the higher-ups and say, hi, I'm gonna make this game, but you're just gonna give me the time I need to finish it, okay? I, like, fuck you, okay? I'm trying to make a good game here, you need to stop rushing it out. And the worst thing is, DMC4 got rushed out by Capcom. DMC4 Special Edition, which was supposed to be, like, an enhanced version with more content, that got rushed out, and half the characters were unfinished. Um, so let's hope that doesn't happen again. Let's have another DMC3. Complete game, that's just an amazing experience. Um, so yeah, if it happens, I'll probably cry. <laughs> I'll probably cry. Uh, just like the uh, game trailer. If you remember, whenever Shenmue 3 was announced, that one guy, on, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Michael Hoover, he, he cried for Shenmue. He literally started crying when it got announced. That'll be me for the MC5. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I can't wait. Yeah, so that that's our, our E3 wish list for E3 2018. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I guess put down in the comments what you guys are excited for, what mm -hmm. you want. Some far throws says to, they'll probably never happen, but you want it to happen. So uh, yeah, thanks yeah. for watching. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I can't wait. I haven't been this excited for E3 in a long time. So there's going to be a lot of cool stuff there. I just wish people would stop announcing things ahead of time. Like, I wish Bethesda would have just shut up about Fallout 76 until the conference came around. I think that would have been a better idea anyway. Yeah. Because people are kind of just like, oh, what is it? Is it a new single player? Or da -da 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 -da? Yeah. And now we have to wait two weeks to find out. So, um, yeah. But the good news is I'm more of a fan of Japanese games, and nothing has really leaked from that side. So too <laughs> yeah. bad for him. But <laughs> nah. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> all right, but... That's all for us, this video. See you guys in the next one. Really soon. <laughs>
But uh, Here, hold on a second. Yeah, we got some oh, cars going on. Lawn outside. Or lawn mower, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright. Running the train on it or something. Um, <laughs>